So this is an experiment, but what about this is not? I'm going to try walking you through the solution of a simple equation using two standard methods, bisection and Newton's method, for finding the smaller positive root of a cubic. And we're going to do this in MATLAB, and I'm not going to use the F0 function. But you'll get to see me staring around MATLAB a bit. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start by writing a function to solve this cubic via bisection. So let's make a little script. Uh, we'll call it bisectsolve.m. Yes, I want to create the thing. Okay, good. So first we have to define the function. So the function that I'm going to use will be uh, a little cubic polynomial. So f is going to be a function of a single variable x that maps to x cubed minus 3 times x plus 1. Notice that I use the dot power. That's because I want to be able to evaluate f on several things at once. So let's start off by getting a picture of what f looks like. So I'm going to put in some temporary code just so that we can see what's going on. Plot f as a function of x. So I want to look at positive values. So let's say we look between 0 and 2. How does that sound initially? So we'll plot x and f of x. OK, so let's save and run. And there's our picture. So it starts off at 1 at x equals 0. We could figure that out by just looking at the function. Dips down to negative 1 at x equals 1. And then it goes up again. So we have a 0 between 0 and 1. Let's try and find where that 0 occurs. OK, so let's see. Find the 0 between. 0 and 1. Okay, so we need to have uh, a strategy, and the strategy that we're going to use is bisection. So we start off by saying we start, we have a root that lies somewhere between a low value, which will be initially 0, and a high value, which will be initially 1, and we're going to do a few steps and cut the distance between low and high depending on uh, uh, bisection strategy. So <clears throat> let's figure this out. So f low is going to be f at low, f high is going to be f at high. Now we're going to do a few steps. So we say uh, for let's say k equals 1 to 10, we could do that more systematically, but uh, this is just a demo. We're going to pick a midpoint. So the midpoint will be halfway between the low point and the high point. So the easiest way to do that is low plus high over 2. We want the value at the midpoint to be f of mid. And now we're going to either cut the interval in half so the new interval is between low and mid, or cut the interval in half between so the new interval is between mid and high. And we're going to do that by figuring out which one of those uh, leads to a bracket with a sign change in between. So if the sign of f mid is equal to the sign of f high, then we want the new interval to be from low to mid because there's a sign change there. So let's write that. So then uh, high is going to become equal to mid, and f high is going to become equal to f mid. Otherwise, we're going to do the exact opposite. So low is going to become equal to mid, and f low is going to become equal to f mid. Okay, let's finish that up. I don't need help. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's give a let's give a picture that shows us what we're doing step by step. That's always a handy thing to have. So I'm actually going to do
do a little trick that allows me to watch interactively. So I'll say up here, B box is going to be equal to the axis so that I know where things are. And down here, I'm going to, at each step, say, let's refine the interval. And up here, we're going to say, plot the current interval. So when we plot the interval, I want two vertical lines that indicate what my current high and low guess are. So let me write the code to do those vertical lines. And let me make the lines red. So I'm going to have a handle for the line for the low end of the interval. So it's going to be a line where both of the x-coordinates are the same thing. They're both low. And the y-coordinates are going to be the bottom and the top of the, the current figure. So we can get that, those out of the third and fourth numbers returned by axis. So b box 3 and 4. And similarly, we're going to get a line for the high end, high to high, b box 3 to 4. OK, and now let's actually set those lines to be red so they're a little bit more visually distinct. OK, so we're going to do <coughs> uh, set h low, uh, and we're going to set the color to be red. And we're going to do the same thing with the high end. OK. Good, so that should be enough to show me something interesting. Uh, and let's save that and go ahead and run it. OK, and now you can see what's happening. We start off with this broad interval between 0 and 1. We cut it in half, we get the interval between 0 and a half. We cut that in half, we get the interval between a quarter and a half. We cut that in half, we get the interval between a quarter and uh, three-eighths. And we're going to keep cutting in half, and we get narrower and narrow, er, narrower and narrower intervals that bracket our root. So at the end, what intervals do we have? Let's take a look. So the high end is going to be 0.3477. And the low end is 0.3467. Now, why is it differing in the third digit? Well, we've done 10 steps of bisection. So 2 to the minus 10 is 1,024. We could do 20 steps of bisection and get another couple of places. But the number of digits we get is growing very slowly as a number of steps. So this is the problem with bisection. It's not very fast. Of course, the midpoint is actually, I think, a pretty good estimate. So let's take a look. So the value of F mid is 0. 0.0016. Low and high are fine. OK, so let's now go back to our code and say the midpoint is now a pretty good guess. So let's try refining that. And the method that we're going to use is a classical method. Newton's method. This is something that you probably have learned in an introductory calculus course, at least I hope you have. And if you haven't, you should go back and relearn it from the book. So in order to compute a step of Newton's method, I need not only the value of a function, but I also need the value of its first derivative. So let's write a little function to compute the value of f prime. So that's going to be a function of x and it's going to be returning 3 times x squared minus 3. I believe that's correct, right? At least I hope that I can do that piece of calculus in my head. Again, notice that I use dot power rather than just power so that I can do multiple at a time. I do this as a matter of habit. Uh, it's not strictly necessary for what I'm going to be doing next, but it's a useful habit to get into. OK, so let's scroll down. And at the end, we're going to say refine our estimate of the root using Newton's method. OK, so 
our guess at x right now is going to be the current midpoint. f of x is going to be f at that point. The derivative is going to be f prime at that point. And we're going to do an update, which is the current guess minus the function value divided by the derivative. Okay, so that would give us a single step of Newton's method. I'd really rather do several steps of Newton's method. So let's say we'll do five steps. Okay, and let's tab these things in so that our code looks reasonably nice. Okay, and I would like to monitor the progress as I go. So let me do that by printing out two things. The first thing I'm going to print out is the step, and then I'm going to print out the current residual. So that's the size of the value of f at my current guess. That should be going towards zero. I'm going to use percent %e, so I'm going to print it as in scientific notation, basically. And then I'm going to use percent %e for another thing, which is the correction that I'm applying. So I want to put the step, the size of my current residual, and the size of my correction. Okay, so let's again save and run. Okay, so now we can see that when we get into Newton's method, we're going to start off with a residual of 10 to the minus third, and then we're gonna make a little correction to get a residual of 10 to the minus seventh, and then make a little correction to get a residual of 10 to the minus 14th, and then at the next step, the residual looks like zero. At least that's the, that's the value that our function, our floating point expression evaluates to. So at each step, we're roughly doubling the number of digits that we have right. We're uh, decreasing the residual by a factor of a square. So it goes from uh, 10 to the minus third to 10 to the minus seventh to 10 to the minus 14th. So the exponent is doubling at each step. And at the end of the day, we've got something which is as good a root as we can hope to get. And that root is actually 0.3473. So it does indeed lie within our bracketing interval. Notice that we used a mixed strategy here. If I had started off a little bit farther away, well, for this problem, it probably would have been fine. For some problems, Newton methods can go awry if you start with a bad guess. Okay, so let's make one quick pass through again to make sure that I don't forget what I'm doing in the future. So this is going to be a demo demo that we did for 3220 for lecture uh, three, uh, posted as a YouTube video. And let's make sure that there's nothing in here that's going to embarrass me later. That's often a good thing to do before you uh, release your code in any form, even as informal a form as this. So we've got our definition. Notice things are nicely lined up. I'm happy with that. We've got a plot. We've got something that's doing bisection. And we've got something that's doing Newton. Okay, I'm happy with that. I hope you are too. And I'll see you in lecture.